Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. This is part 8 of the Polistes Dominula European Paper Wasp Nest Development Series, documenting a complete season for this nest from the time it was discovered in May of 22 through November of 22. For the best viewing experience, you may want to check out our YouTube channel playlist to look at all the previous parts of this series prior to watching this particular section of the series. We also recommend you set your viewing settings on YouTube to the highest image quality possible, otherwise YouTube's default setting is often the lowest quality image. To set YouTube image quality, click on the gear icon, then the quality setting, and then choose the highest setting you can get, 720, 1080p, whatever it is. Let's begin with a five minute preview of this series. This video was shot in the USA, in the state of Indiana, and in North America. In this series, we show you the entire life cycle of a European paper wasp colony. That's Polistes dominula, from the time the nest was discovered in May of 22 with about a dozen cells on it, built by these two co-foundresses you see here, all the way through midsummer when it peaked in size with over 200 cells built on the nest, till the end of the nest life cycle in October, November of 2022, when it wound down and the population died off and flew off to mate. We'll show you the cell count that were visible during each of the growth stages it went through. It was fun to document how fast they were building out this nest. We'll show you all the drama these two co-founders queens went through as they defended their nest from predators of all sorts that wanted to eat their eggs or larvae or parasitize their nest. We watched them fight off spiders and mites and ants and parasitic insects. The ants in particular were very aggressive and they kept attacking the nest. You'll see this ant crawled right into one of the cells and tried to eat one of the eggs right there. The wasp turns around, sets off her alarm buzzing wings, and she grabs it by the leg and throws it right out of there. This was a very common occurrence. It was a daily thing, having to fight for their nest, fight for their territory. We couldn't help but be impressed at the number of times they used their wasp judo, just grabbing the leg or the antenna of the invader and just chucking it off the nest. There were parasitic wasps coming at them. They were always on alert and vigilant. They fought off mites and they fought off other types of insects that attempted to live in or around the nest. There's a whole related ecosystem of insects that target wasp nests and wasp larvae. We'll show you what it looks like when the wasp queens lay eggs inside the cells, which is what you see here. We'll show you all the life stages inside the nest, from the eggs to the newly hatched larva to the mature larva, all the way through to the pupating larva that become adult wasps when they chew their way out of the cell after pupation. And we'll also show you what it looks like when the pupating wasps who have developed through the egg and larva stage are born and chew their way out of the pupating silk caps that they cover their cells with. And we'll show you the process of how they go out to forage for wood fiber which they collect off of aged wood and they fly it back to the nest where they will inspect the nest and decide which cell they want to work on and they'll build each cell one at a time and they'll maintain any that need repair with that material. We'll also show you how they bring back insect protein that they hunt in the wild, they share it with each other, and they maloxate it, which means they chew it up into a fine pulp, and they use that food to feed their larva. And we'll show you that process in detail. You don't have to watch a wasp colony very long to find out what good biological control agents they are reducing populations of insects around your property. Unfortunately, with invasive species, this goes both ways. It can be damaging to the local ecosystem if they're reducing the amount of resources available to our native wasps who rely basically on the same insect population to feed their larvae. We'll show you how they bring nectar back and create a honey-like substance for food. They also bring back water and they attach droplets to the cell walls to hydrate the nest and keep it cool. We'll show you the process of trophallaxis, which is where they engage in mouth-to-mouth -mouth exchange of fluids. You'll see how the two foundresses engage in dominance behavior, such as here, where they're nipping at each other and headbutting each other. And you'll see as the dominance hierarchy becomes established on the nest, 
the alpha female will shake her abdomen like a rattlesnake and she'll sort of nibble at the heads of the others until they drop their antenna and bow down to the queen and, and that's how they maintain dominance on the nest and we'll show you examples of that we'll show you how later in the season the males begun to be born in the nest and the reproductive females who are going to be queens the following season after they hibernate they'll go out and start colonies so the goal of this video is to show you the complete life cycle of a polistes diminula nest the european paper wasp they're very very common now as invasive species here in north america you will probably see these this upcoming spring and summer so keep an eye out for these and we hope when you see them next you'll know exactly how they operate as always, we thank you for being here. We had a great time in the six months that we began the channel in 2022, and we hope to bring you a lot more fun content in 23. Here we'll step back in time to July of 2022. We'll catch up where we left off at the end of part seven. Here on July 10th of 2022, uh, we now counted about 123 cells there's more than that but in this shot that's what we could count we have multiple wasps that have already been born and they're out and active and they're foraging for this nest and we also have as you see here about 30 give or take white silk caps these are pupating adult wasps about to come out of their pupation and help forage for the nest so it's moving along quite well on this date we only took a couple of brief clips here's one showing the profile of the nest you can see how it's expanded and there's several workers hanging out on the nest and some up above uh, resting up near the barn eaves so we already have a few that are out foraging on a pretty regular basis along with the two original foundresses of this nest and in this shot you see the larva it's still very active there's plenty of mature larva about to weave silk caps you can see one has already chewed away its silk cap and is about to come out as an adult we should note here that by this date the original camera which you see here was an old video camera setup we had just looking underneath the barn for hours and hours every day in the heat of the sun occasionally and uh, this thing eventually just burned out so it's done and at this point we had to transition into cell phone footage and eventually obtain another camera which is what we filmed the rest of the series with so this little bit of footage here from july 10th 22 from cell phone uh, forgive the shakiness but it got the job done we just were documenting how the nest looked on this date and from this point we'll move on into some other footage we got later in the month here we are a couple weeks later on july 21st of 2022 you can see the nest has blown up in size quite a bit it's now about 220 cells that are visible in this shot and there's others that we couldn't count from this angle so the nest had really exponentially grown in that couple of week period and so we'll take a look at some extended footage we got from that day so here on july 21st 22 you can see a lot of active foragers now uh, quite a number of them are out mostly females are visible here there may be some males who have been born and left the nest uh, but at this point it's mostly female workers and the two original foundresses in this shot you can see about nine or ten of the white silk caps are still pupating and around them where there used to be pupating cells that are now adult workers out foraging those cells have been refilled with new eggs and new larvae so the nest is quite active now this next generation of eggs and larvae are probably going to be the reproductives and these will be the males and the females who are able to create the next generation of wasp nests in following seasons so the males will mate with the females on this nest or many other nests around the area and the females will then hibernate over the winter and they will store their sperm cells inside their bodies until the following spring and when the spring comes those who survive hibernation will come out and create their own nests just like this and they'll repeat that life cycle so for the rest of this video segment we're going to show you about 35 minutes uninterrupted of this nest this footage unedited we're just going to show you exactly what we see as it happens on this nest so first of all what we're looking at here is there's a lot of foraging going on you're going to see a lot of wasps flying off the nest and a lot returning to the nest and what they're doing is foraging for insect protein to feed all these new developing larvae the insects will be hunted in the wild and then chewed up and malixated 
into small meatballs, which they will feed directly to the larva mouth to mouth. So you see a lot of that activity right here where they're flying in and bending into the cells and going face to face with the larva. Typically what that is, is they're either feeding the larva some of the protein that they're regurgitating or some of the meatballs that they've collected or they're taking a drink from the larva because the larva produce a sweet carbohydrate fluid in their saliva that the adult wasp will drink for their sustenance. So the wasps that are adults and foraging, they'll bring protein to the larva and in exchange the larva will feed them. So there's a lot of evolutionary behavior here where the adults have a very high incentive to feed the larva continually because the larva also feed them. The adults also feed themselves nectar from local flowers and so forth, but a lot of their sustenance also comes from the larva. What we also see in this clip is a lot of wasps will be fanning on the nest, which means they beat their wings very rapidly to move air across the cells, and that lowers the temperature of the nest quite a bit. And if you look in the center of the image here, you can see one wasp building a cell. They have brought back some wood fiber and made some pulp out of it and now they're repairing or building to extend the cell they're working on and they just move around and round and round the edge of the cell squeezing that pulp with their mandibles into the perfect shape that you see that uniform hexagonal shape so you see many wasps here actively feeding the larva or being fed by the larva they're just going cell to cell dipping their head in there and moving on to the next one the ones that you see up toward the top of the frame, there's two wasps that are head down in the cells, but they're not going cell to cell. They're just staying inside the cell. This is normal behavior for the newer wasps that are born on the nest. What they tend to do is they will chew their way out of the silk caps as pupating adults. They'll come out and it'll be hot out there and they're not ready quite yet to be foraging. Uh, they're not fully functional yet, so they tuck their heads back down into any of the open cells they can find and they kind of rest in there and cool off until they're more acclimated and then they can begin foraging within a couple of days. Here at the top of the nest you see one wasp building a cell while the other one engages in a dominance behavior called mauling where it nips at the other one's body and this is part of the hierarchy of dominance on the nest. There's an ongoing structure of hierarchy where the alpha wasps will keep the subordinate wasps or the betas in line through that type of behavior, mauling and other things that make the hierarchy clear to each member on the nest. In the center, you can see another wasp working on a cell, maybe the same one, maybe one adjacent to it that it was working on before. And on the right, you can see a wasp fanning the nest. Excuse the shaky image. The wind on this day was pretty intense. It was blowing the camera gear around. So there's always some more behaviors that you can identify if you pay attention. If you pick one wasp and watch what it's doing, you can generally tell what its behavior is. Is it building a nest? Is it engaging in trophallaxis, which is mouth-to-mouth -mouth communication with another adult wasp? Is it resting inside one of the cells to cool off or to acclimate as a new wasp? Is it foraging for food and bringing it back and feeding? So as you get used to the behaviors of these wasps, you can begin to really identify all of the important behaviors in a wasp nest in footage like this. And it goes on constantly. It's nonstop from sunup to sundown. Here we see a forager return and engage in trophallaxis, which is the mouth-to-mouth -mouth sharing of fluids and communication. It's a very complex behavior. It has a lot to do with your hierarchy as well in the nest. Here we'll listen to some of the ambient sound from the field audio, give you an idea of what the neighborhood sounds like that they're in. They're attached to the underside of a barn in a neighborhood that's pretty busy near an active street, and there's neighbor sounds, and you'll hear birds in the trees. You can hear the sounds of the foragers coming back, their buzzing wings as they pass by the camera.
Here on the lower right, we see another cell being built on the nest by a wasp that had gone out and foraged for some more of that wood pulp. So you can see why the nest grows as fast as it does at this time of the year. At this point in the nest development, there's just constant building happening, not from one wasp, but several. Here we have some trophallaxis happening. Here we have some fanning happening. There's always feeding contact with the larva happening. So there's always something to see. It just depends on which wasp you look at. And when you break it down into individual actions and behaviors, it looks a lot less chaotic. Every single wasp has a job to do and they do it. Once you understand the behaviors of witnessing, it begins to look like a highly organized operation, which is what it is. Here another wasp flies in with some wood pulp and begins inspecting the nest, going cell by cell to see where it wants to build that cell. At the same time, there's another cell being built here. The one down on the bottom right is still building a cell. Now the one that just flew in has worked its way up to the top of the nest on the top right. You can see it doing its inspection of the nest, trying to figure out which spot it wants to build the cell. And at some point it will choose a cell, and then we'll have three different wasps simultaneously building cells on the nest. One. Two. And now three. Here another forager returns, probably out nectaring, doesn't seem to be carrying anything. So it may engage in trophallaxis here momentarily. That's usually the routine when they come back, sharing fluids, as you see here on the bottom left. Here we see one of the foragers return with a large chunk of insect meat. This is protein that was freshly killed in the wild in the form of a soft-bodied insect usually. And they bring back a large maloxated meatball and they share it with the adults on the nest who begin to break it down between them. And then they'll all start to share it with the larva. And these large meatballs come in all day long as they're foraging for protein for the larva. You see how it takes several of them to break down this large meat that comes in. And they'll each take a chunk, maloxate it further, which means just to chew it up into a finer paste for the larva, and they'll begin going cell to cell, feeding the larva. So you see as this group breaks down the protein that comes into the nest, the rest keep foraging and stay active. They seem to increase their activity all the way through up into the later afternoon hours. And then as darkness comes, they will calm down. Here comes another now. Looks like it has some type of nest building material. Here comes yet another one. And there goes one off the nest, taking off to go forage. It's a busy place. As we watch them here for a minute, see how many individual behaviors you can identify and recognize. Fanning. Trophallaxis. Building a cell. Foraging, flying in food, feeding the larva, maloxating or chewing up the protein meat. Once you learn what to recognize, you'll find yourself doing this with every wasp nest you see in the future. And hopefully thereby have a better understanding and a better appreciation for what wasps actually do for us in the environment. One study found that a single colony of yellow jackets was taking in 225 flies per hour every hour. That's pretty incredible. That's a huge number of pest insects that these wasps help us control. Now yellow jacket colonies are often larger than what you see here, which is Polistes dominula, the European paper wasp, but still it gives you an idea of how much they can help us control biologically pest insects all without poison, without insecticide. So these wasps, all wasps, are incredibly important to the globe 
as far as biocontrol of other insects. For the next 20 minutes or so till the end of the video, we're going to let you just watch this nest in action. Watch for feedings, watch for maloxating of insect protein, nest construction, fanning, dominance behavior, trophallaxis, foraging, look for active mature larvae inside the cells, look for eggs in the cells. There's a lot to see, so try to identify it. We're going to let you listen to the ambient sound of the neighborhood, and there'll be no more narration at this point until the end of the video. Enjoy.
As always, thanks for watching. Please stay tuned for part nine. In the meantime, take care and have a good one.